Hello and welcome to another installment of Hamilton Mechanical. Tonight we are going to be uh, assembling or reassembling the spindle assemblies for the Simplicity 16 FCH. And these are some of the strangest spindle assemblies I've seen in a while. So uh, let's get started here and I'll show you what I've run into. <coughs> so we have a bottom. We have our shaft with the bearings. These are brand new bearings, but I assembled it already, kind of. It's just dirt. Ignore that. Okay. So here's our top. New bearing installed there. And then we also have a shim, <coughs> lower bearing cap, blade adapter. blade shim, spline washer, cut washer, and finally a bolt. That's for the bottom. For the top we get one of these guys and one of these guys. Real quick, let's uh, separate back out here. We'll go ahead. So what the, uh, what the instructions call for, which I'm not entirely sure why, but they want this to be sealed. So what we're going to do, go ahead and uh, use some gray RTV. thin coat around the edge here and I'm assuming this is to help keep water out since this is not a cast housing like a typical mower would have the key with this stuff is to just you don't want to put it on real thick just want nice thin put some on there to drag it around This actually does fit pretty tight. Okay. There's that side. We're going to go ahead and do the other side. Trying not to get too much on the inside. Not that I think it'll matter a whole lot. These bearings are sealed. So adding any kind of grease inside here is going to be... Uh, Pretty useless. Well, it never make its way down to the bearing, so I'm not quite sure if they were just trying to keep water out or what. But the seals were cheap, so I figured that. foam seal which you could make yourself you don't have to buy these although they are extremely cheap I didn't know exactly what I was ordering but it is just literally a piece of foam this big around with a hole in the middle so I'm sure uh, that was an unnecessary purchase all right I'm going to add a little bit more um, on this edge here just to seal up All these bolts come together Get a nice good seal at both edges there because I don't want any water running down these bolt holes and in and sitting down inside here. It won't have any way to drain out the bottom. Okay. So there's one. I guess we'll go ahead and do that over here. RTV has about had it. Didn't, use, didn't want to use too good of stuff on it. I'll take this time to tell you a little about myself since we haven't uh, discussed a whole lot of that. So my name is Josh. I've been repairing lawnmowers since about 2000, year 2000, 2001. Um, I started when I was 16 at a lawnmower shop and uh, 
So pretty good at what I do. Um, I have been to several service schools. Toro, Husvarna, Lomboy. I was trained on two-stroke Lomboy. Uh, Husvarna, I've been trained on all of Husvarna's equipment. Uh, Honda, a couple others I'm probably forgetting. Briggs and Stratton, of course. Um, so yes, there are lawnmower training classes that they send you to when you're a dealer. Um, we have to know what we're doing. But you do see a lot of um, what I like to affectionately call backyard mechanics in this business and uh, try to help educate a lot of them. It's one of the points of me making these videos because maybe, just maybe, there's something that I know you guys don't. And, uh, if I know it and you don't know it, I'd like to, I'd like to educate you. I like to share knowledge. Okay, there's that one. There's this one. What's the problem with that? Just do it that way. Still a problem. Watch out doing that a whole lot. You don't want to damage the end of the shaft, but we're uh, we're going to assemble this. I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, let me change my glove before I get RTV everywhere. I'm telling you guys, these are the strangest spindle assemblies I've seen in a while. And gently, the rubber mallet, let's see if we can, uh, that didn't work. Back here. Sometimes a large socket will help you to drive things together. Crooked. Crooked! Press would also probably help. <laughs> I swear to you guys, I had all this together just a minute ago. <laughs> Dry fit anyway, so hang on. Bear with me, I know this is off camera, but I'll probably edit this part out. I'll probably be pretty realistic with you guys about how things don't always go to plan. Fine, bigger.
There it goes. Alrighty. At least most of the way. So now, there's one way this guy goes. There's a little indentation here. And there it is. Okay. And the funny part is we can't put any bolts in this until we bolt it to the lawnmower. So, it's good for the second here. Also, we are going to have to play around and figure out, because Josh is kind of silly and didn't take enough pictures, but uh, let's figure out where the belt guards went. Those belt guards got longer bolts than the rest, so... seated. There it goes. This one just slid right together. See, you saw that? Okay. And we now have two spindle assemblies. Yay! So, let me reposition and we are going to go over to the lawnmower deck and I'll show you what it takes to get all this together. Okay, now we're back over here at the deck, and I've already assembled this one. You can see it is all together, although I did leave out a washer, so bad Josh, bad Josh. Okay, so what we're going to do here to get this back together, first, coat this shaft really good with anti-seize. So this will keep the parts from rusting and allow uh, the next guy that needs to change these bearings to be able to pull this back apart and not have to fight it really, really bad. But what I don't know, <coughs> what I will have to watch my other video to find out is where exactly these guys went. I, I kind of forget. Something like that. Or like that. Cause it's going to be on this outer edge of this. Fully, but since I've painted these, I have no idea. So we'll look in the video and find out. But those get longer bolts uh, uh, where those go, and then there's a nut that goes in the top where it pokes through that holds on. So for right now, how many holes have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Three. just going to stick five in there for right now and just play it by ear. Oh, 
Okay, we're going to go ahead and start running these bolts in. position and we will flip this deck over and okay and here we are back with the deck flipped over so now once again I think it's gonna get a very healthy not overkill glob of anti -seas. into all these splines so that none of this will seize up. Put a little down in our bolt hole. Should keep everything I think this NRC is not about adequate. Look at all in there. that one to get. What that is, that little ring that you guys see there, I'll take the camera off the tripod here for a second, let's just uh, get you in on this here. And you see, there's that ring and that blade actually rides on that ring. If it wasn't, wasn't for that ring, this blade would be too big. So that, that little shim ring has to be there. Its main job is to keep all this from falling off when all this is facing the right direction. Normally all this would be facing down. And so when you took this blade off, all these uh, shim and that cup and that blade adapter would want to fall off. So it does double duty, but uh, very strange design. Very strange. I've never seen anything like it. Last 
Moxley. Something happened to my threads on that one, so I will probably have to chase this sud. So let's ignore that one for a second. I'll get my tent out of here in a minute. Let's um, focus on this one. I know this one's gonna work. This is my brand new shaft. Okay. Shim, bearing cup, Great adapter. Blade, which I get all my parts. I mentioned this the other day. I get all my parts that I cannot get from eBay or Amazon. I get these from PartsTree.com. Uh, these are great guys to deal with. Uh, very reasonable parts pricing. Very reasonable on shipping. And of course, that's only if I can't get it locally. Um, sometimes it is still, uh, especially for long boy parts, it's still cheaper for me to go to my local dealer than to order the parts online. So. Still try to give them some business when I can. Uh, although it is getting harder these days. Alright. Now that one is bolted up. We're going to get all these tightened down. And I'm going to figure out what's up with the threads on this guy here. And or this guy here. Uh, we're going to see what's up with the threads on him. We're going to tighten all these down. And then I'll show you how to make sure that your uh, mower is going to cut good. And we'll be right back. Okay, we got all those tightened down, got that hole chased over there. So, I can already tell you, just from looking at this, this is pretty close. It's not perfect. It is within tolerance. We have about a sixteenth of an inch difference between the blade tips, and really can't ask for more than that. That's that's pretty good. We got a little more of a gap than I'd like. That's just indicative of how this mower is going to operate. Let me get you close up so you can see here. What you're looking for is you want that tip and that tip to line up as close as possible. As you see here, we are just barely off. I mean, just barely. Maybe maybe about a, a sixteenth of an inch, so kind of hard to see on camera there. All right, so all of these bad boys now spin. Okay, so we are going to uh, see if we can figure out where those belt guards go, and uh, I'll be back with you when I have some more work to show you. Okay, we uh, got the belt back on, and we were able to determine roughly where these uh, belt guards should go. They should fall in line with the direction of rotation so that uh, if it was to contact the pulley, the pulley wouldn't go straight up against it. Uh, so this way, if the pulley, the pulley spins this way and the belt guard is coming this direction, so you know if it hit it would just rub, it wouldn't actually catch on it. And that just keeps the belt at the outer extreme from jumping off and there should be about half an inch, a little, little under half an inch, about three eighths of an inch gap right there. You don't want the belt to contact. Same thing over here. You don't want it to contact, but it's to hold it in place and to keep it from coming off. Even though uh, this belt, uh, since this is electric PTO, it would be kept under constant tension. Uh, belt guards are more important on mowers that have uh, oh, uh, manual blade engagement. Uh, because then the belt goes loose when you disengage the blades and uh, if you've left any of the belt guards off the belt can just jump right off so we have the frame back on and it looks like a lawnmower deck so stay tuned tomorrow we're going to uh, try to get all this back on the mower and uh, see uh, see if we can actually get this thing to cut some grass maybe alright well thank you guys for watching be sure to like comment subscribe thumbs up if you like the video and uh, be sure to tell your friends. I appreciate it. 
You all have a wonderful day, and thank you for watching Hamilton Mechanical.